Hey everyone, it's Jen. I know it's been a long time since I've made a video. I haven't really felt like there's been a lot that I wanted to say. Um, life has been pretty good overall and I'm working on a project right now. Um, and work has been pretty busy and I really have no complaints. My health has also been relatively good. Um, I just haven't really had a whole lot I've felt like I had to say. Um, not much new to share since my last videos. However, it did come to my attention as I've been working on a new project that a lot of the resources that I was using in order to incorporate movie files um, to my first version of Soul Union have kind of disappeared from the internet from what I can tell. So I decided to make a video on using WebM movie files for RenPy in case anybody else was just looking for a really concise way of um, incorporating that into their projects. One of the most difficult parts to kind of try to figure out how to use is if you're planning on using transparent backgrounds on your sprite. So um, in my current project, um, I'm using these movie files for this part of the character animation, and I am using uh, WebMs. And so in order to uh, support this transparency so that you can still see the background through the character, um, you need to create a um, alpha mask. And so I'm going to show you my process on how I make these movie files um, with transparent backgrounds. Okay, so first of all, when I'm making these uh, movie files, I am using a free program called AnimeFX. It is a vector animation program. So I am using one flat drawing that I have broken down into different parts. And I'm just transforming uh, the positions. Um, you can kind of see in this timeline. I'm trans uh, transforming the positions. So the entire sprite is kind of grouped into different um, body parts. And this general trans uh, transformation here for the entire sprite is a height and rotation position. So um, you can kind of see the character at this midpoint when they're in the I guess most extreme position from the beginning that they are rotated um, three degrees and that their um, position here has changed. So it's f currently 588 at this, at this middle position and then this beginning position um, it's uh, 568. So their like Y axis has, um, has lowered a little bit. And then um, by the ending position, they have raised back again so that they can be in a little cycle. That I can cycle this short little five second clip um, over and over again, and it'll match up seamlessly. Once I've created my animation um, in AnimeFX, I export this as a PNG sequence into a folder. Um, most of the time I don't save these sequences um, just because I'm always trying to like free up space. Um, but I will save it into a folder that's pretty close to my desktop directory. So um, I have this little hungry because that's the name of the project. And then I'll create like a folder there that'll have all the, um, the PNGs. So I'm exporting at um, 30 frames a second. So the entire five second clip is um, 150 frames. I'm going to choose to make these into WebMs because the files are smaller than um, keeping all these PNGs and it's less uh, programming. I won't have to program each frame of it playing. Um, I can just program the one the two files that I'm going to be using, which is going to be that um, WebM and the WebM mask. I've actually created a file that I have the, um, the script that I'm going to run on FFmpeg to make my WebM and my WebM mask. 
um, saved here in this WebM text so that it would just be really easy for me to copy and paste what I need. Um, so first I would need to um, tell tell FF or have the path set up. So I'm going to go ahead and um, click win, uh, Windows, the window key in R to run um, the command here. And then I'm going to go ahead and copy paste this path so that it's set up to execute my command um, in this folder. So this is the folder that has all of my PNGs. If I didn't, I already delete it. Oh, I guess I did probably delete Dante, I don't Dante's, oh, Dante's smile is still there. Okay, good. So I have all the, um, it looks like I already exported these WebMs. I'm gonna go ahead and delete them just so that we can see them appear when the process is finished. Let's see the other, the mask. So I probably didn't run the mask, um, but yeah. So now I have my, um, my pathway set for all the PNGs in sequence here. Oh, I guess I should also note that when I'm exporting from um, the PNG sequence from Anime Effects, it'll give you the option to select that directory. So like I can select a folder and then you can, it'll kind of make a default name here that it will make a four digit extension. I get rid of this export here so that it just does underscore and then it does the, um, the image number. And then I will just make sure all of this matches up. So you want these, this image file extension to be the name of your file. And then instead of putting the four digit image number here, it's just going to, you're just going to put this percentage sign and this four to indicate that it's going to be four digits, this 4d.png. And so then it's going to run through all the files that are named Dante underscore smile underscore four digit number dot PNG in order. And it's going to export this as um, this codec here at um, 30 frames and change it into a WebM movie file. And then I'm going to um, do the same for converting all those PNGs into the alpha mask. So what that looks like when you run that command. Is this going to take a second to think? At least my computer does. <laughs> and then it's going to run a bunch of stuff that looks like the computer computing. And it's going to be analyzing all these frames and compressing it into that WebM. And then when it's done, it'll go back to that kind of like initial command line. So I'm going to go ahead and just copy paste my next command, which is going to be for making the mask. We almost done. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and um, paste that in and let it run that to create my mask. And you can see that it's just making it in that same directory folder, that I, that same path that I assigned it. We look up here, we can see that the WebM is working just fine. And then this is what our like masks looks like. And that's working just fine. Okay, so then I'm going to take those two files and I'm going to add them to my projects folder. Um, I like to organize uh, my folders in a certain way. So when I go to open my project, I'll have my images and then 
the characters are going to each have their own folder to have their animations in. Um, and then I created a just a, um, a file here that's going to have the um, the sprite set up to play um, the WebM and then also play the mask. And then this frame drop here is just something to keep the two files synced so they don't um, so that the mask, if there's lagging, the mask doesn't get desynchronized from the um, from the main WebM and it'll just kind of all lag together instead of like getting desynchronized. Um, so now we have our character expressions and then I just programmed those in how you would normally program, program in a character sprite. I'm gonna go ahead and link um, these, these little lines here <laughs> so that you can easily find them. Um, I'll replace them with like, you know, instead of like my specific desktop pathway um, with generic, you know, uh, insert your, your folders here type um, naming convention, but I'll go ahead and type those in the description below so that it's easier to find. Um, so for my process, in a nutshell, you can do it with all free programs. I do use Photoshop, um, but if you don't use Photoshop or you don't want to pay for a subscription to Photoshop, um, you can use Krita and export your files as PSDs. And then those PSDs you can open in AnimeFX to create your animation. And then, um, I use FFmpeg. So that's my process and I will try to document that below so that if anybody else is wanting to incorporate um, transparent movie files to their project, uh, they can. This project that I'm making right now is going to be a visual novel with point and click elements. So there is going to be um, mainly a navigation buttons over here. That's kind of why that's empty is because there's going to be um, up, down, right, left arrows. And then there's going to be some menus that you can open as well. But the main exploration or uh, kind of flow of the game is going to be I guess a hybrid of a visual novel and a point and click adventure. So I'm going to be using a lot of image buttons for the um, player to be able to click on elements in the scene to start up the dialogues and investigate different um, objects in the story to have it kind of unfold that way. So that it's not just like reading a lot of text and just hitting the forward button for the entire duration of the game. Um, these little sprites here are PNG sequences um, because I find working, I, I don't really know how to work with movie sprites and um, the Ren Pi screen language. I just feel that I have more control over um, those kinds of elements with the PNG sequences. Um, and I, they're not as many frames as the expression animations, so it's not quite as daunting. One thing with these um, movie files is that they do seem to have issues with like the layering. Um, I'm not really quite sure exactly what it is with the layering order um, with these movie files, but I found that I had to kind of come up with creative solutions in order to get this character to overlay on the background um, screen sprites. I had to kind of swap those out with like a static um, character sprite instead of having it as a screen behind them. 
Um, so I might go into that a little bit more detail in um, a, another video if anybody's interested in um, my process broken down a little bit more. But I hope this helps with anybody who wants to find out how to easily use these transparent movie files um, in RenPy games with all free um, software and programs. And that's all I have to say for now. So um, hope everybody has a great summer. And I, if I think of anything else useful to say or share with the world, then I will make another video. Take care. Bye.